<laughs> yeah. uh, let's start uh, with what uh, actually was happening in Maputo, Mozambique, just coming to the end uh, last week where we had, uh, I think, uh, eight boxers from Kenya representing Kenya in the African Championship Elite Boxing. It was a good performance from the Kenyan boys bagging silver and bronze. Yeah, we did a uh, commendable uh, tournament at uh, yeah. the Africa Boxing Championship, which was being held at, in Maputo, yeah. Mozambique. Uh, we had a big team <laughs> yes. of 25 boxers, mm. but unfortunately we didn't have resources to take all of them for the Africa Championship. Mm. So we only managed to get assistance from National Olympic of Kenya, where they came in and uh, helped us, facilitated us actually to go and participate in the tournament. We yes. took eight, uh, eight boxers, mm -hmm. uh, five boys and mm. three girls. Yes. Uh, and uh, out of the eight, we were able to bag four medals, which I think it's a good, very good, co very good uh, performance by our boxers, considering that uh, most of the Afri top Africa boxing nations were there. Yes. And uh, actually, we had three finalists mm -hmm. because we got three silver medals. Yeah. It's unfortunate we didn't we didn't manage to win a gold medal. Mm -hmm. But if you look, uh, if you do an in-depth analysis of the performance of the team, you'll see there's a good improvement. And uh, also, I can say some of our boxers are still performing mm -hmm. at uh, a consider older age. Yes. Considering uh, somebody like Nico Koth, who mm -hmm. was defending his title, yes. managed to get up to the final and won a silver medal. And he last won that gold medal in 2017 at the Africa Championship in uh, Congo Brazzaville. And this time round, he still managed to get to the finals and he won a silver medal, losing to a Zambian on points and it a split point, 3-2. Yeah. So it was a very close fight. Uh, again, even if you look for the boxers who lost in the preliminary rounds, for instance, David Karanja lost to a South African and that South African went on to win a bronze medal. Mm -hmm. uh, Shafi Bakari lost to a Bos uh, Botswana, mm -hmm. Botswanian boxer and the fellow went and won a silver medal. Mm -hmm. Christine Ongare lost to a Zambian, mm -hmm. the Zambian won a gold medal. Mm -hmm. So even the bouts that we lost, we lost yeah. against quality boxers Better competition. who went on to perform very well in the tournament. Yeah. So I would say the future is bright for us mm -hmm. and our boxers are doing quite well. And uh, the tournament was also being used as qualifier for world championship. Yeah. So at least for the four, uh, we'll have qualified automatically, but unfortunately I'm aware that uh, our captain, Commander Nico Koth, might the, not make that, that tournament. That, that is what uh, <laughs> was coming up to because uh, now we understand that Commander now is actually coming to, I think, the twilight years of his career at 37, 39. 39 now. 39 now, mm -hmm. and he's actually been the captain for Team Kenya now and he's coming to the end of his captaincy. Just give us a brief overview of uh, the career of Nick because he has had a very good career from being in the being actually in the Kenya Defense Forces and also representing Kenya in Olympics in Africa when it comes to boxing. Yeah, he has a very yeah. long illustrious career. Yeah. I remember when he was starting. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I actually competed against him. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's new. So we are the people, yeah. we sharpened him. Yeah. Uh, I defeated him in one of our early bouts when he was still very young. Yeah. He was coming up, he was an upcoming, but very promising. Yes. We had a competitive bout and he went on to don the national colors for I think around more than 15 years. And uh, he has competed in two Olympic games. Uh, Beijing 20, 2008 yeah. and 2020. Mm -hmm. uh, it's not easy considering there were two Olympics, 2012 and 2016, he didn't yeah. qualify, mm -hmm. but he still managed to qualify for the 2020 Olympic Games. Uh, I think he has done uh, four Commonwealth Games mm -hmm. and won a bronze medal from 20, 2010 in yeah. India, Delhi. And I think uh, from that championship, he got a baby and named the daughter Delhi. <laughs> wow. uh, yes. So I think uh, generally I'll say Nick Kokot has been a very good uh, sports person in general and a wonderful captain for the team. He always inspires the team whenever he will go for these international assignments. He wants to be the first one to start the tournament. 
uh, somehow he believes that he starts with a good luck. When he gets into the ring, fights very well, wins, he believes that sets the pace for the rest of the team. And I think it's very important when you have somebody who inspires you. Because even the younger boxers in the team look up to him. And so I, I think he was an inspiration person. And as a federation, we are very proud of him. We yeah. also assisted him uh, preparing for transition because yeah. when we organize for an Ibasta one coaching course, we yeah. ensure that he participated. Yeah. And uh, thank God he qualified. And so he has just not activated uh, the coaching part of it. Yeah. But now that uh, he has hung his gloves, I believe he's going to now uh, activate his coaching and start uh, passing the knowledge that he has to youngsters. And we hope he's going to groom youngsters who will perform yeah. just like he did or much better than he is. Looking at his category in the lightweight category, which he has dominated for a better part of, I think, a 20-year career that mm. he has been in boxing, are there some the names that you can tell us who actually take over from him now because he has really made a mark in the lightweight division. Yeah, uh, yes, we have, uh, we have uh, several upcoming boxers who, who have been competing with him. But uh, what I can say, in, what, I, well, what I know from the reality on the ground is that uh, yes. the gap between him and the next boxers is very wide. Uh -huh. Because the kind of experience he has when you have uh, represented the country in more than 16 years yes. at the top level, and locally, he's been defeating. I think for the last maybe five years, nobody has been defeated him. So I think uh, the gap between him and the upcoming boxers uh, is very wide. But now it means that as a federation, we need to do our homework well and give the upcoming boxers in that weight category some uh, exposures so that they can be able to start building their experiences and uh, so that when we take them, for international assignments, they are able to win medals. Yes. Because uh, for us as a country, when we take our boxers out there, we just don't take them to go and participate. We want them to go out there and compete and win medals. So that's why we say you see sometimes the, different in, the difference in experiences is very huge yeah. in that you have somebody whom you can reliably, whenever you're going out, you can say that you expect a medal from this person. Yes. Nico Kot, you expect a medal from him. Mm -hmm. But now, if you take the next pa person in that weight category, yes. when you take them out there because they don't have that much experience, you, you wouldn't be so confident that they are going to win a medal. Yes. But I believe there is a youngster who is coming up called uh, Cleve, mm -hmm. uh, the Joshua Cleve. They participate, uh, he was the runners up during the trials that we did for the Africa Championship. Yes. Uh, he's in the youth national team. And I believe uh, he's very promising. He started boxing way back when he was a junior. And now he's, uh, he has become of age and where he's now competing with the likes of Nico Koth. Mm -hmm. So I believe he's a talented, youthful boxer who can be able to be nurtured by our coaches and become a champion just like Nico Koth was. Yeah. There's also this uh, kid who came in uh, with a silver medal in actually the featherweight division. That's Samuel Wajomunjao. Yeah, he's also a new kid that uh, not many people know him, but uh, what a performance he had in Maputo to get a silver medal. Actually, mm. I expected Njao to win a gold medal. Wow, well, okay, yes. Uh, yeah, he's new kid on the block, he's not known. Yes. So you see, sometimes when you are known, people will do, will they do expect research on you. Yes. No, people have done, the opposition also does research to know <laughs> how yes. they're going to contain you. <laughs> so, but when you are bringing somebody who is top quality and is not known, is somehow good because nobody knows how he plays. Nobody has these video clips of yes. what to expect out of such. So Fonjao, uh, is, uh, is originally he came from G44. It's a club uh, in Gidurai 44. Mm -hmm. Yes. And then he was recruited by KDF. Mm -hmm. So he's in the KDF team and he's their team captain. Yes. Uh, we took him for Africa Zone 3 Boxing Championship in uh, DRC Kinshasa mm -hmm. and he won a gold medal. The earlier this year. Yes. So when we were now selecting the team, because we also had a serious challenge <laughs> to select the team to go for the Africa Championship because, like I told you, we were 25. The we numbers had, were... Actually, we had about 29 boxers in camp. Yes. And we, of course, full team is 25, <laughs> where we have uh, 13 male 
and 12 female. Yes. But now when we had a financial difficulty and we had to select uh, a smaller team to go and represent, uh, we had a difficulty in now trying to select who are the boxers that you are going to pick to go and represent us. And we thought Njao was very promising. And we see him as somebody who's the next big thing in mm. our local boxing scene because mm. he's very talented, he, he, does, he boxes very well, and very uh, soon he's going to be uh, experienced enough because he hasn't had that much exposure because mm. this was his second day debut at the national team. Yeah. So I believe he's somebody who has got a very promising future in the ring. And I, I believe uh, even when we go for the Olympic qualifiers, yeah. I believe he's one of the boxers that we'll expect to qualify for the Paris 2024 yes. Olympic Games. Uh, and also we had also another kid, uh, Bonface Mogunde. Also yeah, get Bonface Mogunde yeah. at uh, light, middleweight category has mm -hmm. done very well. Mm -hmm. uh, for the, uh, Mogunde won bronze medal in the 2019 Africa Games. Yes. And that was his first international assignment. Mm -hmm. uh, he's very promising. Uh, of course, some changes happened when uh, Iba now increased the weight categories. So mm -hmm. because uh, Bon Bonface Mugunde used to box at like twelve no welterweight category, yes. which was sixty nine kgs. But now w once the adjustments were done, mm -hmm. he had to go up weight. Now he's boxing at light middleweight, which is seventy one kgs, mm -hmm. and he's performing very well. Uh, we took him for zone Africa zone three twice. He has won a bronze and a silver. Uh, now at the Africa Championship, he has won a bronze medal, and that weight was very competitive. Mm -hmm. Even the Commonwealth Games silver medalist from yeah. Mozambique was in that same yes. weight category, and he didn't get a medal. Yeah. So it was a commendable performance for Boniface Mugunde to win, mm -hmm. uh, to win the bronze medal, because when you look at the quality in that weight class, yeah. it's very tough. Even for Olympic qualifier, I know it will be very tough for to pick the top four boxers in Africa. Yes. But if uh, now he's winning medal at Africa Championship, I believe he should be one of the four boxers who will qualify for the Olympic Games 2024. Unfortunately, last time we were very hopeful that Mugunde will qualify, uh -huh. but now the world qualifiers didn't happen. Yes. Uh, it w we had an incident when we went to for the Africa Olympic qualifiers. Uh, Mugunde boxed very well first round, and then he got he was hit a lucky punch by a Cameroonian boxer and knocked out. Mm -hmm. That's how he lost. Yeah. And the boxer who won that gold medal, the Cameroonian, uh, has since participated in uh, Zone 3 Boxing Championship twice. And uh, now in Africa Championship, he didn't win any medal. Mm -hmm. uh, so Mugunde is performing way better than the person who defeated him at the, the African the Olympic qualifier. Was lucky. Yeah, he was lucky. Yeah. Uh, but uh, okay, it was, uh, I don't know, I th w the time we did the Africa qualifier, he was boxing well because he went on to win the gold medal during yes. the Africa qualifier. Mm -hmm. uh, in Tokyo, he didn't perform very well. And even in the Zone 3 Boxing Championship, Boneface Mugunde has been performing better than him mm -hmm. by far. Mm -hmm. So I believe even we, when you go for the Olympic qualifiers, mm -hmm. Mugunde has a very good chance of qualifying for the Olympic Games. Uh, as we finish this conversation of the Africa that was happening in Maputo, we've got to talk about the lady uh, Elizabeth and Diego <laughs> also <laughs> coming home with uh, also silver a, medal. a silver medal. Yes. It's a big one for us. Yeah, very big. Yeah. Actually, she surprised me mm -hmm. uh, getting to the finals of the Africa Championship. Mm -hmm. And what surprised me even more was that uh, when she traveled to Maputo, yeah. she was traveling as a light heavyweight. Mm -hmm. uh, light heavyweight starts at uh, 76 kgs. Yes. And when she got to Maputo, she was the only one in light heavyweight category, yeah. so she could not win a medal mm -hmm. if she's alone. Wow. So she had to gain mm -hmm. five kgs in three days to compete at heavyweight category. We will talk about <laughs> that when we come back. Let's go for a short commercial break. When we come back, we we'll have to understand how we can win five kgs in three days <laughs> to get to boxing. It is the touchline here on Y254. Welcome back to the program. It's all about sports. We'll be coming back later with the fan zone to discuss everything about football. But let's go back to the conversation mm -hmm. we were having early in just a few minutes ago where Duncan was telling me that Elizabeth had to gain <laughs> 5 kgs <laughs> in, five, in three, days three days to compete in that uh, competition. Yeah. How did that come to happen? <laughs> 
Yeah, like I told you, she was supposed to compete at light heavyweight category. Yes. But when she got to Mozambique, mm -hmm. she found that there were no other light heavyweights. Mm -hmm. She was the only one entered light heavyweight, so she had to move weight category. Yes. And therefore, she had to gain mm -hmm. five kgs because the heavyweight category starts at uh, 81 plus, mm -hmm. and she's at 76. Yes. So you need, wow. uh, if you, during the day of weighing in, mm -hmm. the day you have to compete, Yes. In the morning, you have to weigh in. Mm -hmm. And if you're underweight, you yes. can't compete. Mm -hmm. If you're overweight, you, you can't, can't compete. compete. So you are risking that she might be underweight. Mm -hmm. uh, then it means she had to take a lot of water and yes. eat a lot of food, mm -hmm. which again makes her to be uncomfortable. Yes. So it was not easy ensuring that she gained that weight. And also during that time, she really minimized, she was not training. Because one, when she trains, the weight goes down. Yes. And we want it to go up. Mm -hmm. So she had a tough time gaining the weight. Mm -hmm. But luckily, uh, she was able to attain the weight. During the day, she was weighing in for her semi-final bout, mm -hmm. where she was competing against a lady called Sintole from South Africa. Mm -hmm. uh, it, it's, a it's a lady we had seen competing during the World Championship in Istanbul. Yeah. So at least she knew how the lady boxes mm -hmm. and she performed very well because in her first bout as a heavyweight, uh, she managed to, to knock out mm -hmm. the South African in the first round, which was, uh, which was commendable. Well, all uh, in all, we can say that uh, the Maputo competition for the African Championship was a, a very good outing for Kenya compared to the last edition. Yeah, by far. Yeah, yeah because uh, during the last edition, you only had one finalist, uh, Nick Koth. Uh, this time round, we had four finalists, yes. which was good. Uh, although, when you look at uh, the quality of opposition, because now for like for Elizabeth and Diego, yes. uh, for in the final, she was competing against uh, uh, Madi Khadija mm -hmm. from Morocco, yes. a very experienced boxer. Khadija is a 2019 middleweight gold medalist. Yeah. Africa Olympic qualifiers, middleweight gold medalist. Mm -hmm. Now she has a story herself uh, yes. because uh, during this time when we had a COVID break, mm -hmm. she had qualified uh, as a gold medalist in middleweight yes. for the Tokyo Olympic Games. Mm -hmm. But now when we had that break, when the Olympic Games were suspended, she somehow got herself pregnant. Wow. And she gave, she gave birth yes. 40 days to the beginning of the Olympic Games. So she was not able to compete at the Olympics. At the Olympics. Yes. And she made her comeback this year mm -hmm. during the World Championships. Yeah. And she moved from middleweight now to heavyweight. Mm -hmm. And she, she managed to get to the finals of the World Championship where she won mm -hmm. a silver medal. Yeah. And I think it was just bad luck. She, was, she looked to be in shape to win the gold medal at the World Championship. So I knew it was going to be a very competitive game. For It was going to be difficult for Elizabeth and Diego competing against Adija because she's huge. Yes. When you look at the body shapes, mm -hmm. she was way, way, way bigger than Elizabeth. She's tall, mm -hmm. so she knows how to use her height very well. Mm -hmm. uh, and so Elizabeth had a very tough time trying to get her range yes. competing against Khadija, who is again, we say it's a very, it's a top, it's top quality boxer from Africa. And that's somebody whom, even at the Olympic Games, you expect her to go and win a medal because she's a top, top Africa boxer. Uh, for somebody like Njao, Njao, we expected uh, that fight to be competitive, though we expected him to win. And is some, is, I believe if we go for the Olympic qualifier and Njao meets the same boxer from Mozambique, yes. Njao will qualify for, Olympi for, Olympics, for Olympics, defeating that boxer from Mozambique because he, I don't believe he was that good, mm -hmm. but just a few mistakes that Njao needs to correct yes. and he'll be able to win. Nico Koth, it was a very close bout, 3-2 judges. It means three judges voted that the Zambian won, yes. two judges voted that Nick won. Mm -hmm. So it was that close. Yeah. Uh, out of the five judges in a ring, you, they were split yes. halfway. So I believe it was also a very competitive game. And uh, unfortunately, we were not lucky in the day that none of the three decisions went our way. But I believe we are not doing very badly. Yeah. I believe when we get back to work and prepare our boys better for the Olympic qualifiers, we are likely to have more boxers qualifying for the Paris 
2024, 2024 Olympic Games. Speaking about uh, qualifications, I understand also that the, the World Youth uh, Championship trials are going on and also we'll be talking about the Olympics qualifications, but tell us about the trials for the World Youth Championship. What are some of the young kiddos will be <laughs> keeping our eyes on? Yeah, in boxing we have uh, age groups. We have yeah. school... Uh, School, 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 school boys and girls. Yes. Then we have juniors. The juniors are from 15 to 16. Yes. Then we have youths at uh, 17 and 18. Mm -hmm. So later this year in November we have World Championship for the youth. Mm -hmm. That is uh, 17 and 18 years old. Mm -hmm. And so we are having uh, trials ongoing. Yes. I think the finals have just started at Jericho Social Hall now. Yes. Uh, I think we have about ten, we have ten bouts. Uh, it uh, somehow we didn't get uh, very many boxers because I think we have about 49 male boxers and about six girls. Yeah. Uh, we are trying to select a team that is going to represent us during the World Championship to be held in November. Mm -hmm. I believe one of the things that may, might have made the boxers to be a bit fewer is the the requirement that we put that somebody has to come with a birth certificate. Uh -huh. uh, yes. Sometimes mm -hmm. we need to prove. Mm -hmm. Uh, Your age, the age matters. of our yeah. athletes, and we don't want to be involved in what you call, they call age cheating. Yes, uh, which uh, sometimes I think it's more rampant in football, mm -hmm. but in boxing, we thought it was very important that uh, any boxers coming to compete, mm -hmm. they must produce their birth certificate mm -hmm. to prove that uh, they were born within the age limit that yeah. uh, is provided. And so I think uh, the the young guys who are there are doing a very good job. Yeah. Uh, the tournament has been very competitive. And you're expecting that at the end of the day, we'll be able to select good boxers who can be able to go and present the country effectively at the World Championship. And they also form uh, a very good base where they, because we expect them to graduate to seniors yes. from the youth. Mm -hmm. And I believe it will be good when we have very many of them competing and challenging the yeah. seniors at the elite level. And that will ensure that the future of boxing in the country yeah, is going to be sustained for many years to come yeah. because we expect to continue doing the juniors and school boys and girls yeah. tournaments so that we give youngsters chance to showcase their talent. Mm -hmm. And I believe we are going we are going places in boxing this time round. Well, we are still hanging out with the Dan Kankura is actually the communications director of boxing uh, federation of Kenya, and we are talking about mostly what is what is happening in the world of boxing. And let's talk about also the Olympic uh, qualifiers that are also coming up. When we were talking off earlier, it just comes to my mind that uh, boxing, qualifying for the Olympics from a boxing perspective, looks to be one of the toughest stages to go through for you to qualify for the Olympics. Yeah, it's not easy to qualify for Olympics. And yeah. uh, especially like now, you know, in the past, like when Wangila won his gold medal yes. in 1988, yeah. uh, Kenya could take a full team of 12 boxers mm -hmm. to the Olympics. Yes. And that's what they did. They took 12 boxers. Yeah. Kenya uh, alone. Kenya alone took 12. Yeah. Uh, but you see now, from 1992, that's mm -hmm. when now we brought in the qualifying process, mm -hmm. where boxers, for you to go and represent uh, the country at yes. the Olympic Games, mm -hmm. you have to qualify in the continent. So it's Africa. Yes. So normally they take the top four boxers in every weight category. Although when we went for the Tokyo Olympic Games, it was a bit different because like for the lower weights, yeah. uh, the lower weights, we had three boxers mm -hmm. in each weight category yes. qualifying for the Olympic Games. And in the higher weights, which is the heavyweight and super heavyweights, mm -hmm. you are only picking the top two boxers mm -hmm. in Africa. Yes. So sometimes it saddens me because you find in some of our groups mm -hmm. of people you thought are informed, journalists, yeah. mm -hmm. discussing how we are taking older boxers to the Olympic Games. Yes. And it's not like it's Boxing Federation of Kenya taking the boxers to Olympic Games. These boxers go for Olympic qualifiers mm -hmm. and qualify as yes. the top boxers mm -hmm. in Africa yes. to be able to participate at the Olympic Games. And so it's not easy to qualify for Olympic Games, and it's the dream of each and every athlete to yes. be able to participate at the Olympic Games. And we are very lucky as a country because we have never failed to qualify for Olympic Games. Yes. And we expect even in the 2024 Olympic Games, we are going to have representatives there. 
Well, tomorrow also we're going to be having the International Boxing Association Extraordinary Congress that will be coming up in Armenia. And I understand also our president will be representing us. <coughs> What, what do we expect? What, what are some of the major decisions that will be coming out of that Congress? Or what, what are some of the key decisions that people are waiting for from that uh, Congress? Uh, yes, tomorrow we have an extraordinary Congress. Yeah. It's going to be happening in Armenia, yeah. Yerevan, mm -hmm. the capital of Armenia city. And uh, we believe that uh, the key decisions to be done are two. Yes. Uh, when the Congress starts, there's a decision that has to be taken mm -hmm. on whether mm -hmm. we are going to have presidential elections. Mm -hmm. uh, because I believe in the Congress that was done in uh, Istanbul yes. in, uh, in, Ma in May, mm -hmm. uh, we elected Omar Kremlov as the president of Boxing Federation, International Boxing Association. Yes. And later on, one of the candidates who was disqualified, mm -hmm. uh, Mr. Boris uh, van der Vost from Netherlands, went and protested the decision at the Court of Administration for Sports. Yes. And the decision of eliminating him from the presidential, presidential race mm -hmm. was re reversed. Mm -hmm. Okay, the boxing integrity unit that disqualified him was said to have gone overboard. They should not have disqualified him. Yes. Because I think he has done a small mistake of campaign, early campaigns. Uh -huh. uh, so now the Congress is supposed to decide whether we are going to have new elec uh, presidential election. election. Yes. And then if they agree that we are going to have new elections, mm -hmm. now we are going to vote. Mm -hmm. uh, and uh, there's an earlier meeting that had been done where they are likely to have only two candidates. Mm -hmm. uh, the the current president, who is Umar Kremlov from Russia, yes, and now Boris Van der Vost from Netherlands. Mm -hmm. uh, us, as Boxing Federation of Kenya, we are fully behind the current president, Mr. Umar Kremlov, yes, because I believe he has done so much for boxing. Like just now, we've just from analyzing Africa Boxing Championship, and maybe there's something very important we forgot mm -hmm. that during this uh, Africa Boxing Championship, for the first time in the history of Africa Boxing Championship, boxers were given cash awards. Uh -huh. Oh, yes. yes. For boxers who won a gold medal, they were getting $10,000. Yes. Our three boxers who got to the final and won silver medals, each got $5,000. And uh, Boniface Mugunde, who got a bronze medal, uh, won himself $2,500. That is the first time that has, that has been done in box Africa Boxing. Yes. And it has been done courtesy of the current IBA president, mm -hmm. Mr. Umal Kremlov. Yes. So I believe it's very important that as a continent, mm -hmm. we ensure that we support the current president to continue with the many different initiatives that he has started to reform uh, boxing in the yes. world. And the most important thing will be to support him so that he's able to push the agenda of uh, boxing, especially having to go back to the Olympic family, yes. because we have a challenge, like even for the, for the Olympic qualifiers that are coming, uh, the International Olympic Committee has decided that they are going to organize boxing themselves, mm -hmm. that uh, we have challenges in uh, IBA. So we thought it's a bit unfair, but uh, I believe uh, if we give Mr. Omar Kremlin a chance to be able to lead the International Federation, mm -hmm. he's likely to bring much improvement that is required in the sport. And I believe the future of boxing is very bright with Omar at the helm yes. because he has, he has been able to transform so much. He has given so many equipment to, to different federations and equipment is what helps us to tap talent at the grassroots level. Yes. Like when he came to Kenya, he was, he was able to give us more than 100 boxing gloves, 100 headgears and pads which we distributed to different clubs which he had, been, he, he yes. had identified mm -hmm. before coming. So I believe though that's the kind of leadership that we require mm -hmm. uh, to be able to transform the sport. During the World Championship that were done both in Belgrade and in Istanbul, the boxers who were winning there were getting prize money, $100,000 for yes. winning a gold medal, $70,000 for a silver medal and $50,000 a bronze medal. I believe that's the kind of money that you win as an athlete. It transforms your life for yes. good. So I believe uh, Umar is good for the sport and uh, tomorrow uh, we are going to make that decision. Uh, as a federation, we don't see why we need to go back to election because 
we made a decision and uh, we could see most of the international federation believe Umar Kromlev is the best for boxing at the moment. Yes. Uh, probably maybe IOC might be having a different feeling that uh, prob that Umar might not be the best. Of course, we had we know we, they had a problem with uh, uh, him being Russian and mm -hmm. with the problem with uh, Russia and Ukraine. Ukraine yes. And also there was a problem in the sense that uh, one of the key sponsors of boxing, mm -hmm. uh, International Federation, the Gaspo, mm -hmm. which is from Russia, it's yeah. an oil company from Russia, mm -hmm. is one of the main sponsors uh, of the Inter International Boxing Association. And uh, IOC had risen some questions about that. But I believe, nevertheless, Omar has the best interest of improving the status of boxing in the world. And we are going to support him fully. Briefly, let's talk about the kickoff of the National League Boxing also coming up uh, next week. How is it structured and how is it going to happen? Yes, uh, this time we had, we had a very busy international Window. assignment Break. much yes. earlier in the year yes. that we, we were not able to start our National Boxing League mm -hmm. and we are going to start it next week mm -hmm. from 29th to 1st. Yes. It's going to be in Transoya County, mm -hmm. Kitale. Yeah. Uh, so it's uh, rotating. It, it rotates. Yes. That's first leg. Uh -huh. So we are going to have five legs. Yes. The first one is going to happen in Transoya. Mm -hmm. I believe the second one is going to Meru. Mm -hmm. The third one will go to Laikipia County. The fourth one will go to Mombasa County, and the fifth one will go to Kisumu County. Mm -hmm. So those are, we normally go around mm -hmm. different counties yeah. so that we are able to attract as many people into the sport of boxing as possible. Mm -hmm. So all boxers, they should prepare. We meet from Thursday mm -hmm. in uh, Kitale, and it's the first time boxing is going to Kitale going because... Uh, Transoya is yes. relatively new in boxing. Yeah. Uh, th these are now fruits of the new constitution and the Sports Act yes. of 2013 because we had not devolved boxing to the grassroots level. But this time round, we are going to Transoya County for the very first time. Mm -hmm. We are hoping to get good reception there. We are hoping to inspire more boxers mm -hmm. from that area. Yes. Uh, I know, I know at my, in my inbox, I get a lot of requests from some counties where so far we don't have boxing clubs like Wasingishu. Uh -huh. And I believe it's a high time as a federation we go to an area like Wasingishu County yes. and tap talent there because there are so many boxers who request me if they can join boxing, even up an area like Kericho County. Uh -huh. And sometimes you know you're advising them to go. The nearest is Kisumu, <laughs> Kisumu. County, which yeah. is in the neighborhood, but I believe Every county that has got talent, we need to give them a chance to be able to uh, showcase their talent and yes. earn even from the sport. And I believe the future of the sport is very bright and we are going to ensure that as many counties as possible get uh, registered and we get those uh, county boxing associations mm -hmm. so that they can be able to continue tapping talent at the county level. And I believe when we have counties that are very competitive, then definitely when we do our national tournaments, mm -hmm. it's going to be very competitive. And we go back to some of those old days when we had yeah. uh, national leagues who are very competitive. We could be able to send four different teams to four different international assignments mm -hmm. and all come back with, with victories. Yeah. So I believe it's still possible, mm -hmm. but we need some work to be able to build mm -hmm. the structures that are there and make them better so that when we get to now doing these tournaments, we get very high turnout of boxers and we they're not just uh, we don't, our issue is just not to produce the volumes yes. but also quality mm -hmm. so you also need to look at the coaching aspect of the sport at the local level mm -hmm. because we need to have coaches who are qualified at the local level producing talent yes with the right basics mm -hmm. so that when we come to the national team we are again not having to teach basics because those basics have been taught and mastered at the local level yeah. and when you get to the national team level just polishing that talent and taking it out there to make the country proud well thanks a lot duncan that has been duncan kuria is the communications director boxing uh, association boxing federation of kenya actually pardon me for that i'm robert osoro it is the touchline let's enjoy some highlights of uh, England losing to Italy 1-0 in the UEFA Nations League and also Hungary winning 1-0 against Germany. When we come back, it will be all about the fan zone.